everything he did is what he commanded you and I to do. John 13, 34 to 35. The same way he loved is the same way he told you and I to love. It's an unconditional love. How can you love unconditionally? Except that there is something in you that empowers you to be able to do it. Only Jesus loved that way. And he told you and I that we too should love like that. If we don't have what he has, it would have been a huge setup. Number two, the same way he served is the same way he told us to serve. John 13, verse 13 to 15. You call me Lord and Master. He said, you are right. He said, but now I have humbled myself to wash your feet. He said, you also do the same. The one who serves among you shall be the greatest. Same level of service. Number three, same way he forgave is how he told you and i to forgive to forgive unconditionally luke 23 34 while he hung on the cross forgive them father for they know not what they do matthew 6 14 and 15 he commanded you and i to forgive ephesians 4 32 he said the same way we were, we were forgiving for christ's sake he said we should also forgive and he didn't stop there he also gave us the power to forgive people their sins study john 20 from verse 21 to 23 as the father have sent me he says so also sent are you and he said whomever sins you forgive he said they are forgiven what authority were we given what power were we given see this is why most of us who are begging god to do something god is wondering don't you know who you are i have installed you on earth like i installed christ look at him and photocopy it that's what i've made of you this is the key and the foundation for victory and a glorious existence he preached the gospel mark 1 14 to 15 everywhere matthew 28 19 to 20 he commanded us to also preach the gospel he prayed matthew 5 16 mark 1 35 he commanded us also to pray matthew 6 9 to 13 he obeyed the father's will luke 22 42 at the garden of gethsemane not my will but thine Matthew 7 21 he commanded us also to obey the father's will he had faith for the miraculous he commanded us to exercise the same faith mark 11 22 to 24 have the god kind of faith when you confront a mountain don't beg command the mountain to be removed he said the mountain will obey you he was humble he commanded us to be humble philippians 2 verse 5 to 9 matthew 23 verse 12 see everything he was capable to do he commanded us to also do likewise why do you think he spoke to us like that if we didn't have the capacity why will he be setting us up by telling us to do it he gave generously even his life john 10 11 he commanded us to also give luke 6 38 everything that jesus do, did he was holy he commanded us to also be holy hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 and matthew 5 48 first peter 1 15 16 the same way he was holy he said we too should live holy that means we have the power to live holy he suffered for the sake of the kingdom he commanded us to also suffer for the sake of the kingdom luke 9 22 and luke 9 23 he healed the sick he commanded you and i to also heal the sick matthew 8 16 he said when the evening was come they brought all that were sick and he healed them all and then he told us matthew 10 from verse 8 to 9 to heal the sick to cast out devils to cleanse the lepers everything the master did he said you and i should go out and do why do you now think that you are insufficient why do you now think that that circumstance can kill you does he not suggest to you that you are learning from another master if jesus is your master if jesus is the one you trust why have you allowed other things from circumstances to men to demons to make you feel that you will have an outcome different from what jesus told you if jesus told you you have overcome what make you think you will not if jesus told you that you will prevail what makes you think you will not he said whoever is born of god overcomes the world why do you think your country will defeat you why do you think you will fail because of where you are does he not suggest to you that your circumstances are educating you differently if jesus told you to pray you will hear god what makes you feel you won't hear god when you pray if jesus told you go out and heal the sick what made you feel that when you pray for the sick they will not be healed if jesus told you that 
when he sent you without money you didn't lack anything what now educated you that we walk in lack it means that something else other than christ has begun to teach you if we will conquer this world we must come back to become spiritual men the bible says we have not received the spirit that is of this world he said we have received the spirit that is of god and so we know the things that are freely given to us by god he said these are the things we speak and they are not words that human wisdom teaches he said but they are words that the holy ghost teach and he said we compare spiritual things with spiritual he said the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned you will die of that sickness because you believe that sickness can kill you but some of us believe that if that same spirit that raised jesus from the dead lives in us he will quicken our mortal body you will be poor and be helpless because you believe that you will be poor and helpless but some of us believe that we will lay up gold as dust some of us believe that we will lay the gold of offer as the stones of the books you believe that you will be unknown obscure and irrelevant in your generation because of where you came from but some of us believe that we were sent to manifest god to all the worlds from jerusalem to judea to samaria to the uttermost part of the earth i know that i will be known i know that i will be relevant he said i will be a joy of many generations i know that my impact will transcend me my impact will not stop in my lifetime my impact will not stop after i am gone when i am gone my impact will continue to subsist because he said I'm a joy of many generations. I know that my tomorrow will be better than today. I never dare think that tomorrow will be bad. Oh, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. We know the part of the just man is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I will be bigger tomorrow. I will be brighter tomorrow. I will be more impactful tomorrow. Because that's what he said. I may not understand how he will do it. But they say, as thou knowest not how the bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child. It says, so also knoweth not thou the ways of the spirit. Who told you that you'll be forgotten in your generation? Who told you that you will not have impact in your generation? Listen, you may be 35, you may be 45, you may be 50, you have not started. It doesn't mean you will not start. The Bible says, with God, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. He can compress all your manifestation into one day. Look at the life of Jesus. For 30 years, nobody knew him. But for three years, he changed his world. Who told you that the outcome of your life is tied to the longevity? We will live long, but we will make impact. Not because of, of our longevity. I'm telling you, this is who we are. But you cannot have this consciousness except as you know that as he is so are you in this world except as you know that you are sent on an errand listen if you are looking for divine authority i carry it i'm not boasting i'm sent from god if you are looking for divine essence i carry it i'm not boasting i am born of god and i don't carry it because i'm an apostle you carry the same because you too are sent you carry the same because you too have the dna of god hear this when we say god wants to do something don't start looking around and say who will he use shout and say lord we are here that's why we came when they say god wants to visit the territory don't say oh he will send apostle a he will send prophet b he will send evangelist c no you are the apostle you are the evangelist you are the prophet that god will send when they say god wants to sponsor an agenda don't wait for the rich oh we will enter all the nations of the world and you are there saying lord raise helpers for them you are looking around somebody is wearing a blue suit another one is wearing a white suit you say huh see they give us when will i be like this you are joking you are the giver the world will make you you are the one who will become big you are the one who will sponsor it listen do you think when we are talking some of the things we are talking we are waiting for a senator to come from somewhere a governor to come from somewhere if they come thank god for them but when we are talking we know that the people listening to us they may not look like it now but not too long from now they will be metamorphosed we know they will be metamorphosed and every day we keep seeing it happen they will be metamorphosed because we are the ones god has called see when jesus came if you were christ who will you select as your disciple would you go and lobby for governors because the governors wanted to hear him and i'm not saying god is not using them but i'm telling you the audacity that he had would you go and look for the biggest men in society jesus went to fishermen who were not educated he said follow me i will make you i will make you i will make you so that the glory will belong to god i will make you if god can make fishermen is it you who is a graduate of philosophy a graduate of physics that god can make 
is it you who can speak and write that God can make? When this man spoke, the Bible said they knew they were unlearned men. Yet they shook their words. I'm telling you, you must realize the reason Jesus became flesh is because God is showing you there's a project. And the project of God is that God wants to manifest through men. And after Jesus demonstrated it, the next ones he's using is you and I. Because he's the first of that order. He's the firstborn of many brethren. So the path he followed is the path we follow. The things he did is the things we'll do. And Jesus summarized it in John 14, 12. He said, the works that I do. He said, you will do also. And he said, greater works. I was telling some of the brethren I was teaching last night. Some of the ministers I was training. I told them, every story we have heard, we love them. They inspire us. But it's nothing compared to where we are going. The Bible said, behind them is a desolate wilderness. He said, but before them is the garden of the Lord. That means what Paul did, what Elijah did, compared to what God wants to do now, he said, the manifestation of Paul is a desolate witness. The manifestation of Elijah is a desolate. We honor them. We appreciate them. But we know the best of God is in front, not behind. We know the best of God is ahead, not behind. And guess who is entering that forward? It's you and I. Because Paul has gone. Peter has gone. Elijah has gone. But you and I, we are still here. And as we go forward, we will see glory to glory. Power to power. Dimensions to dimension. Somebody give the Lord the shout. I want you to declare to yourself the Bible said declare now and you shall be justified you have you have received enough prophecy I want you to declare to yourself now number one who you are and number two what you will accomplish can you do that now begin to declare to yourself who you are who you are and what you will accomplish 